I'm Rihanna van Nieuwenhuizen. I started this project in 2006 when I bought my first cheetah. She was called Phila. So ever since a small girl, I was always involved with animals, chickens, cats, doves, anything. I, that just made me happy and I, I realized that are more my passion than humans and um, I grew up in quite an abusive home so I cried a lot um, and one day I saw a photo of a chila in a magazine and with their black tear marks I just it was something like did you cry I cried and maybe we have a story to tell each other and it was a dream like one day I want to work with them and get to know them better and tell them my story so I was 43 years old when I was in the position to make that big step and was the best thing I ever did in my life for myself and for the animals and when I started I had no idea where what's going to happen where am I going where is this taking me but it was just like this big dream of if I can release only one cheetah back into the wild I would feel like I did something for them and my motto is if you can dream it you can do it and so many things already came true because the dreams of a child and, and every human being must have a dream. I still stop dreaming I still go on dreaming dreaming about this big farm where I can be involved and see how I can release the cheetahs I can go out and watch them and have a more a more quieter life and adore them the, dream that started so many years ago how how that can realize one day Phila was about eight weeks old when I got her it was very tricky to apply for the permit um, of course anybody can't just go and buy a cheetah there's a lot of legislation and things involved in it um, but I was very patient and I can remember the day I fetched her it was me and Renee and we drove home home was a townhouse then I got a permit for the townhouse just for two months and after that, I had to be at a place with, you know, uh, that is according to nature conservation that they have the permits and everything in order. But I was <clears throat> very quiet. We drove. I sit on the back seat and Phila was in a crate. And I just watched her and I was like, this is not a dream. Can this be real? Can this be real? And the feeling of, I'm finally doing this. I'm finally doing this. And then it was like, okay, what is next? What, what are you going to do? Where are you going to start? What's the, the, the dream? Yeah, you want to work with cheetahs. At that stage, I did not know a lot about cheetahs. I 
were involved with the friends of the zoo. I raised animals for them. But the cheetah is quite different. And uh, as time goes on, I had to ask these people and everywhere to just know, am I doing things right? Is she getting the right food? It was quite a tough time for me and Phila. Um, I just resigned quickly to be with her and there was no income really. So we moved out of town where then I worked on this farm, but I had to do a lot to look after the animals, um, do game drives, work with guests in the lodge and it was like I did not get the time with Phila and I got very exhausted and it was tough oh, sometimes you know I was so hungry when we took the plates from the guest to the back and if there's left I was you quickly eat it just to get something in and I knew this was not the life that I dreamed about. This was, I have to change it because now I don't get to spend time with Phila. I see her late at night and then early in the morning she must get up. And then we finally found another place where, where Chida Experience were born in Bloemfontein. We spent uh, 16 years there and then from there we moved to Bella Bella we only rented the farm there and we did put a lot of effort and money and work into both the camps there and at a stage I knew this this is not our forever home what I was dreaming about um, they started to develop the land and I knew this is not good for the cheetahs for the project for me and then with the generosity of the volunteers we started to look for land and uh, it was it was God's plan that we had to move here we bought this place on an auction without me seeing it. And it was like, oh, nobody must know what I did. We drove the next morning early. We drove here to just see what did I do? And it was, when, when, when we drove in here, I could feel this, this is yours and other things you know when a door closes, there's an open one you must just look and find it because the open one that's the one with all the opportunities and that's why if i sometimes i look around and say is this true this is so amazing and when we started with our first volunteers it was like oh my word what can we do because we don't have space for them and I said I will move out of my bedroom because two girls were coming and we put into single beds and I will sleep in the office so that's where we started and um, they enjoyed it a lot we enjoyed it uh, to see how they react and and every time you get to meet new volunteers, some of them, you know, they just become family because they, they feel the same. You can feel their passion, their love for the animals. They travel far, many hours. The tickets are expensive. They are exhausted when they come here. But then every day to see that passion and if I can put a smile on somebody's face, it makes me so happy. Then I know I'm doing the right thing. 
So I, I love to make not only animals happy, but also humans. I feel I have the ability to heal animals and humans from a lot of things. Um, we all know the world, there's a lot of heartache in the world and I know I, I, I do make a change in a lot of people's lives.